So in this lesson, we're going to have a look at uh, calendars in SharePoint team sites. So I've navigated to a standard SharePoint team site. And one of the things you'll notice on the navigation on the left, there is no option as yet for a calendar. There is in fact no calendar in this team site, which means that we'll have to go and create one for this location. Now to do that, we go to the cog in the top right. We select that and from the menu that appears, we want to select the option here to add an app. Now when we select that, we'll be given a list of apps that we can add to our team site. One of those is Calendar. And typically the fastest way to locate that is simply do a search uh, for that item. You'll see that we have a match here. So if I select the Calendar, I can go in here and give it a name. And if I want, I can also look at the advanced options. So you'll see that I get a number of additional items I can select here, but I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to call it Calendar and create that. Now, once it's created, we'll be taken to the location where that calendar is. You'll see that we can move between the years by simply selecting the arrows in the top left here to move to our different years. If we want to change the months, there are additional arrows here that we can cycle quickly and easily between the months. We also get an indication of what today is. So we can click on that and it will take us back to what today is. So again, if we want to, if we go to the calendar tab up the top here, You'll see that we can view this by day, we can view this by week, and we can also view it by month. Now you'll notice that when I select day, this um, shortcut here also changes. So again, that will be context sensitive. Now the easiest way to add an event is to go to the events tab and select the new event button. You'll see up here, I'm then asked to enter my information about the event. I can also select a location, a start date and time, a description, I can also enter a category, all right? So this is customizable uh, if you want to. And you'll see that I can make the event an all day event and I can make it repeating so once a year if I want. Now you'll also notice at the top here, I get the ability to cut, copy and paste. So that will typically take information and put it into the description. You'll see that I also get the ability here to attach a file. So I'm gonna attach a file to a calendar item. In this case, I'm happy with that. I'm going to select save. Now that appears in the calendar on that time and date that I have entered. So if I go in here and select the title, you see that I'm bought in and I can get all the details about the event. I can also go in here and I can edit this event as I did before and update any information. In this case, I won't make any changes. Now the other way that I can add an event, you'll notice when I mouse over a particular day in the bottom right of that day, you'll see I get an add hyperlink. So if I select that, Again, that will give me the option to go in and create an additional event. So there are two ways that we can create events in calendars. We can go to the events tab and then the new event uh, button. And we can also mouse over the day. And when we mouse over that day, you'll see that we get an ad in the bottom right hand corner that will take us through the same process of entering an event. Now we're looking at the calendar here basically uh, in uh, months and days. Now we can change that. The way that we do that is we go to the calendar tab. You'll see that the view is currently set to calendar. If I pull this down, you'll see that I have a number of different views, right? So the one we're on is calendar. I can select all events. So for example, all events is simply going to show me a list of any event in the calendar in sequence. So again, you'll see that I can easily swap between the different views which we covered in uh, additional lessons. And you'll see that I can move from calendar. All right, so that's where I was. And again, we can go into that and select the option here to go to uh, all events. We can go to current events. And we also have the ability to create our own events if we want to. So you'll see here that we can select the ability to create a view that will give us a different look to our calendar if we so desire it. So again, lots of things that we can do with calendars. So if we go into the calendar tab here, you'll see that we can create additional views. There are different ways to look at our calendars. You'll notice that we can email a link to somebody. We can also set up alerts so that we uh, receive an email when changes are made to this calendar. We can set it up to be an RSS feed. So again, we can look at the feeds from this calendar. We can also connect this to Outlook. So that will allow us to view our Outlook calendar and this calendar in SharePoint side by side and that information will be covered in an upcoming lesson. We can export this to Excel, and if we need to do any management, we can go into the list settings here. So for example, what we may need to do is if we need to delete this calendar, you'll see under permissions and management, we can delete this list if we want to. 
All right, so again, lots and lots of options here when it comes to calendars. And remember, in the case of most team sites, what happens is that the calendar is currently not displayed. All right, and you'll notice here that it currently doesn't appear on our menu, even though we have added it. So the way that we can get to that if we can't see is we go to the cog once again, and we would go to the site contents option. Now the site contents option is going to show us all our items here. So you'll see that this is the calendar that we added, which we can navigate. All right, so you'll see here that I do have that calendar uh, listed. Now what I need to do to get in the quick start menu at the front is I need to go into list settings and you'll see I've got here an option for name, description and navigation. If I select that, you'll see that I have an option here under navigation to display this list on the quick launch. I'll select that and make that yes. I will save that and that will then update that. If I now go back to the home of my team site, we should see now the calendar item has appeared, right? So again, remember that typically by default, a calendar isn't part of a uh, team site. You'll need to go in and go to the cog and firstly add an app. Once you've added the app, you'll then need to go into the calendar, go into the list settings, then into the uh, list name, description and navigation, and then basically select the option here so it will appear in the quick launch so that when you go into the home page here, it will appear as an option. Now, some of the more advanced things we can do with calendars, for example, is we can go in here and we can actually do calendar overlays. So what that's going to allow us to do potentially is we could create a calendar for a room, a boardroom. We could overlay a staff calendar over the top so we can see when it's available and whatnot. So we're not going to cover that in uh, this lesson, but you get the idea that there's a lot of power behind um, the SharePoint calendar. Really easy to go in and create. You can have as many different calendars as you want in a SharePoint team site. The way to create it is we select the cog again, we go into add an app, and we simply do a search for a calendar item or a calendar app to add to our environment. We select that, give it a name, and then that will then uh, appear in our environment. So it's that easy to add a calendar. Once we've added a calendar, you'll see that we can go in and basically add an event to uh, anywhere in our calendar and we can also attach files to those items and we can again customize the categories here if we want to we can add additional categories so that is one of the big bonuses of using a SharePoint calendar over something like an exchange calendar is we get the flexibility to create as many different fields and customize those to suit our needs. So hopefully it's given you a bit of a basic idea of what a SharePoint calendar is, how to use it, how to create it, and also how to add it to the menu.